Hi folks, I've put this short piece about our dowsing detective Peter Vincent out separately because it's all about his history because with his deep interest in and research to do with ETs through the a scientific a method as he can make it through these codings using color codes and numbers which often act like barcodes for very unique individual identifiers as well as those for places and things, he has had some remarkably accurate results. So he posed the question, you know, I wonder if it's in the genetics when he was told by a local psychiatrist whom he was discussing this kind of attribute, she said, well, you know everything. So he didn't quite know how to take that. But in the meantime, as a younger man, he had spent a lot of his time when he was working in London on his lunch break, looking at the ancestral records. And he spent a long and time doing that. So I thought it would be quite interesting for you to hear how our dowsing detective's lineage goes back goes. to royalty. It does seem that along the way, the royalty element, and you could say that many of us at some point will all have a link with royalty, who knows? It certainly does seem on occasion to be part of or the facility within of his being able to do what he does. And his grandfather also had some very interesting attributes. Anyway, I'll let you hear Peter speak about those. And as we say, it's just interesting, isn't it? Okay, folks, history of Peter Ellis Vincent, our dowsing detective. Enjoy. I mean, whether this is something genetic or not, I do not know. But OK, if I go back into family history, we have a direct link to a royal bloodline. I spent months and months and months researching this because my grandmother used to tell me all these stories. I mean, one of the most interesting things we found is that Charles II, his daughter, Princess Anne, who later became Queen Anne, she had a relationship with the Duke of Buckingham, John Sheffield. He invaded the bed bedchamber because he wanted power. He actually wanted to marry Princess Anne and he didn't want George of Denmark to marry. Buckingham invaded the bedchamber. Charles II got to hear about this so banished him and took all his titles away and sent him on a leaky ship to Tangier, which he wasn't supposed to get there, but did. And in the meantime, George was hurriedly married to Princess Anne. Then she started having a family. Well, the first child was about two to three weeks overdue. That's nothing unusual. My wife was with our first born daughter. When that child was born, it was stated to be a stillborn daughter but it was named Francis. So she was known as Lady Francis Stuart at court, brought up by Arabella Churchill, so I'm informed. And then Buckingham formed a relationship with her in later life before she married herself and had two daughters by Elizabeth and Charlotte. Charlotte links to us, but when John Sheffield died, he gave each one of them 6,000 pounds each in the Sheffield name. And that came from a will in Westminster Abbey, where I found that Lady Francis had later married a uh, title in Ireland, the Lambert title. When she died, she was buried in Westminster Abbey and the birth, the death date, of course, gave her birth date and the rough age, which was the confinement time of Queen Anne. And of course, when Buckingham came back to the UK, having not died, Princess Anne gave him Hyde Park to go with Buckingham House for having, and it, this was in a book, for having made love to her before a marriage. <laughs> now, it couldn't be any more explicit than that. So that something went on, George III bought Buckingham House and turned it into the palace as we, we know today. The thing is that there is a direct line because that Charlotte Sheffield married the Reverend John Walker and they had a daughter. And then another relation of mine, uh, we've heard of the Duke of Monmouth. Well, he was John Scott, who was Charles II's adopted son. He had a relationship with Henrietta Wentworth. And there was issue. And that issue became John Scott, the Reverend John Scott in church. Uh, then the next generation down was including one Francis Scott and Lydia Scott. Lydia Scott married one of my ancestors. And Francis Scott was the chaplain to Frederick Louis, Prince of Wales. Frederick Louis was very well known for womanising. 
and there was one Mary Dell who sort of got into trouble. Sadly, Lydia Scott died, so John Ellis was basically a widower. So Francis Scott said, well, there's a little problem here. Maybe you'd like to take this one on. So in 1748, there was a wedding at um, Sunbury upon Thames and a child born in Great Beeling. And that became the line that then married the child that was of the marriage of Charlotte's uh, and John Walker's uh, daughter in, in Leeds in, in uh, 1762. So you've got something, a marriage in 1742, that side, a marriage 1762 in that side, and the, the issue both got together and created a bloodline coming down. So you've got a bloodline from John, the Duke of Monmouth, Frederick Louis, and Queen Anne. <laughs> to so, you. Yeah, so basically you couldn't have that many blood links to the 42 line as it goes all the way back. <laughs> because he married this lady, and don't forget, Frederick Louis was hit on the head with a cricket ball, and everybody said, oh, great. <laughs> you know, the women are safe sort of thing. You know? That uh, John Ellis was made keeper of the lions in the tower. But he also was an artist, and he was a purveyor of tapestries for the crown. And he did a lot of tapestry buying for uh, Walpole, for fitting out the house there. And um, so that line came down. I sort of followed this all the way down. But I knew my grandfather, he had a problem. He could never wear a watch. Magnetic fields with him were a killer of any watch, so he couldn't wear a watch. He knew people who he developed the first battlefield computer, the punch, magnetic punch cards, which was used in the First World War to find the best man for the best job. He was a mechanical engineer. He developed the H engine that's in the Science Museum, which I think is the forerunner of tanks, aircraft, and most motor cars we've got. Just, uh, was able to add up a row of figures. He could see what was going on outside and have a discussion with. He could do three things at once, basically. <laughs> so, it definitely sounds like he's an ET hybrid kind of child, well, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes you wonder. Yes, mm. basically. <laughs> very interesting. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much. We'll say it's over and out from mm. the dowsing detective and remote viewer yeah. Peter Vincent. And myself for the ET Newsroom, China Summer Scales. Bye for now.